So hi, my name is Reva Ryan. Um, I'm here to talk about my bar story. Um, so I, I graduated from the University of Miami School of Law in 2018. Um, I attempted to take the bar that first July after graduation. And of course, I you know applied for a bar loan. I tried to secure the money to be able to take the bar and I, didn't have enough money. I, I did not get the bar loan because no one in my family was able to co-sign for me. So because of that, I stopped that first attempt in July, the beginning of July. So I had to um, I had to figure out a way to, to make money. I moved back home with my parents. Um, I was dog sitting. I was substitute teaching. I was doing anything. I was knocking on doors for the November campaign of 2018. And I just did everything I could to make money. Um, so when I started taking, uh, started bar prep again in 2019, for 2019, February of 2019, um, you know, I was still working a lot. Um, still substitute teaching and dog sitting, but dog sitting was an easy way to make money and still study. Um, but substitute teaching was definitely a big issue because I spent, I think my school was, made me work from like nine to sometimes six o'clock and later. And I mean, people work full time while taking the bar and it is possible, but that made it difficult. So when I took the bar in February, I had a feeling that I didn't pass. And it was true. I missed New York by five points. I took New York, um, the UBE for New York. So I missed it by five points. Um, and then I, well, actually that's, when I was getting to the bar, that was another story because I kind of had to hitchhike. <laughs> to take the bar. So I got on my first flight to connect. To, I, I'm coming from Florida, by the way. Got on my first flight and they announced that my connecting flight was canceled. So I ended up just crying once I got to the, the airport where I was supposed to meet, get my connecting flight. I ended up crying and some woman, um, decided to help me. She saw how upset I was. And there was another woman taking the bar at that time. So she, she was amazing. She volunteered her husband to drive from, because we they offered us a flight to Pittsburgh. I was supposed to connect in Charlotte and go straight to Buffalo to take the bar in New York. Um, so she volunteered her husband to pick us up from Pittsburgh and drive us all the way to Buffalo. I think it was about three hours. So that was a lot. Um, and that cost me a lot of time while I was, because I planned to stay like, I don't know, I planned to get to New York really early and have a lot of time to, you know, get mentally focused, to relax, to study and, cover some more subjects that I didn't feel as comfortable with. Um, but I did not have that time. I was in the back of a car for a few hours, just like trying to absorb anything I can from all my notes. Um, but that woman was amazing. Um, and she came out of nowhere. She was like, <laughs> like an angel. <laughs> and so, yeah, that all happened. And I, I missed that one by five points. Um, so, I uh, tried again for that July and that was the worst. I thought I felt ready and then I took it in Albany this time. I got to Albany, didn't know how cold they kept the, the room that we took the test in. Um, people had winter coats on, people were shivering. There was somebody sitting next to me and he was chewing tobacco and just spitting it in a cup. I don't know, all of that was insane. And 
I, oh, the first time I took the bar, I wrote the exam because some some craziness happened and I had to write it by hand. And I think that helped me that time to absorb the information more because when I practiced typing for the exam, I don't know what happened, but when I got there, my mind was completely blank and I had to leave in tears. I left early. I did not finish that exam. I I think I answered one question and I don't think it was completely answered and I just had to leave. And I sat outside the convention center in Albany in tears. I think I had a panic attack and horrible. So I, I just try, I just, you know, knew I had, I did not have a chance. I came back for the MBE, of course, the next day and I did my best, but there was no way I passed. Um, so I, you know, tried to regroup. I found another job, um, the end of the year, maybe a few months after I took the bar, maybe October. And it was a great opportunity. Um, I ended up going to Japan for training for the job. And I, 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 the job was to be a legal trainee. I think in Europe, they do trainees. So you don't really practice in your first few years, something like that. So when I got to Japan, my job decided I was going to be an investment manager. I have no background in that. So that job was chaotic. I ended up, you know, working until the beginning of 2020 and, you know, COVID happened and I ended up getting laid off. So then I had time um, to regroup and try to take the bar again. So um, as, as everyone remembers, COVID made everything crazy. The exam was in person, then it was remote, it was rescheduled. I didn't, I wasn't able to sign up for New York because I had to be a, a graduate of a New York law school to get first seats. Um, I ended up signing up for New Jersey. Then it, when the exam went remote, New Jersey and New York did not have reciprocity. I couldn't transfer my score over. It was only gonna be good for New Jersey. So I decided to bow out and that's when I decided to transfer my score. So the first time I took the bar, I missed New York by five points, but I passed in Alabama, I passed in New Mexico, North Dakota, I think, Missouri and Missouri and another state. So I decided since I was in Florida, Alabama is close. It wouldn't be that crazy of a move. And then I can have another try at New York another time. So I, you know, ended up using all the money I saved when I moved, I moved back home again after I got laid off. I saved some money. Unemployment was happening. We had the stimulus checks. And so I ended up transferring my score to New York. I mean, to Alabama from New York. And ended up licensed. And then I I found a job in New York that allows me to be licensed in Alabama. I'm doing immigration, so it's federal work. And now I'm working in New York as if I was licensed, a licensed attorney in New York. Well, not quite because, you know, I have to do, um, I'm only limited to federal law, but I'm still working in New York like like I wanted to, everything worked out. So everything happened for a reason. And sorry, my voice sounds like this. I have COVID right now, but. <laughs> All right. I'm done. Awesome. And I think that we definitely need to have this conversation because I just think you brought up a profound point about being licensed in another state, but being able to practice federal law. I think it's moving to hear your journey. 
and I was trying to keep up with all the different things that you had going on, girl. You had a journey to get there, and it was not an easy one, but it was a journey nonetheless. So I think that your story was valuable, but more than that, right? You showed people that like, I didn't have to go back and take the New York bar. I will one day when I feel like it, if I feel like it ever, but I'm working in a job where all I needed was my Alabama license and it didn't matter, right? That I didn't do well on the New York bar. They didn't ever accept me because I found a job that found my license in Alabama that I own, right, as enough. And sometimes in this bar journey, you might have to create your own reality, right? I want to be in New York and I envision myself in New York. How can I get there? And you did it, right? It was a federal job. And I think that's really cool. I think that that conversation needs to be had. And this is super empowering. Um, I'm going to go back off the screen and let you tell them how they can contact you. But yes, I really enjoyed this because I practice trademark law. So I also do federal work. I love federal work. Um, it lets me work with more people everywhere. So definitely let them know how they can contact you. And I will try my best to put the contact in the thing. But, you know, just just let them know. Tell them a little bit about you and any takeaways that you have. All right. So you can contact me at ReverRyan92 at Gmail. Um, oh, also, I do a little bit of trademarks, in, you know, on the side <laughs> because I work for a nonprofit and you know, need, <laughs> need a supplemental way of getting income. So I do a little bit of trademark work on the side um, while when I can. And uh, yeah, um, takeaways, takeaways are that, yes, you can still, you know, pass the bar in another state. You know, if you took the UBE, if you missed by a few points, there's another way you can pivot and still you know, end up doing what you want in the end. There's another, there's, I guess, what's the saying? There's more than one way to, <laughs> to skin a cat. So if you want to get to that final place, figure it out. It's it's possible. I love it. Well done, Reva. We're going to end the broadcast now, but I just want to thank you so much for your time and I appreciate your story. It was really encouraging and hopefully y'all enter some federal work. Y'all know you need is a license somewhere to practice anywhere if you get into federal work. So just letting y'all know this is that episode where we're going to talk about that. So well done, Reva. Well done. You. you did that, girl. You are a superstar and you should be really proud because most people, myself included, it took me two years to be able to finally build a clientele and realize that I don't have to be restricted to my state because federal law is a whole different game and you yeah. picked up on it way sooner than most of us. So go girl, you go. <laughs> All right. Thank you Reva, for your time. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. Bye. <laughs>